I nearly killed my computer, and I should have known better. My current editing computer is a Dell Inspiron laptop with an i7-8550U processor. This is rated at 1.8 gigahertz. That's an important number to remember as I go through this video. I bought this to run Wondershare Filmora for video editing about a year ago. This worked great for that software and I was really happy with the speed increase. The computer was a demo model and was being closed out at Costco and at a great price. So I wiped the hard drive and reinstalled the Windows 10 but I never checked the BIOS. That was a mistake. This computer has the function of overclocking the CPU on demand. While this is great for speed, it does require monitoring. That's the part I missed. While Filmora is robust in the things it can do, it's not pushing computer performance. It doesn't use the graphics processor and keeps the processing to the CPU. Lately, I've been working with DaVinci Resolve though. This is a much more powerful editing software. I did a couple of very short videos on it, that didn't really push it too hard, and it worked great. The software does many of the things that Filmora lacked, so my goal is to actually use both. Filmora for the quick and easy videos, and Resolve for the motion graphic, major sound editing, and color grading aspects. These things will push a computer as much as playing some high-end games, so my results will be helpful to those who are into those games as well. But to get where I wanted, I needed to do some complete videos with Resolve so I can develop the skills with just using it. Our last video on steel wool was completely edited on DaVinci Resolve. That almost cooked my computer. Running Resolve for eight hours straight, I noticed that the keyboard was hot and there were errors popping up in Resolve that I couldn't explain. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew that I needed to cool the computer down to keep working. The system fan had been on for many hours already and it was blowing really hard trying to cool it down. So in desperation, I tried a little MacGyvering and came up with a temporary solution, ice. Now, before you get panicked, I know that electronics and water do not mix, but this worked to get me through the edit. I turned the computer off and set it aside. Then I placed a microfiber towel on the desk. I used a Ziploc freezer bag and filled it up halfway with ice. Then I added a little water and sealed it. Then I put the bag of water on the towel and pushed the ice to the far end of the bag. I set the computer up on some scrap plywood so the ice would be behind the computer, but the bag with the water would be resting under it. I started the computer back up and felt the area above the keyboard. It was cooling down, even with Resolve running both GPU and CPU. This lasted about 45 minutes. Then I had to add more ice and drain off some water. I did that for the rest of the edit. Total amount of editing took about 13 hours. Finally, after I finished the edit and posted the video, I started to look at what was wrong with my computer getting so hot. Now remember that 1.8 gigahertz I mentioned at the beginning of the video? Well, I found that it was running 3.6 gigahertz for most of the day running DaVinci Resolve. This was getting the CPU and GPU to well over 90 degrees C and it really may have hit over 100 at the hottest. That would explain the errors that were popping up. This was caused by a switch in the BIOS of the computer to overclock the CPU on demand. So now I had to find a way to cool this computer. Well, first I turned off the overclocking switch. This helps, but I'm still running several very robust editing applications and they peg the temperature well above my comfort zone for the CPU. So to avoid a meltdown, I bought a laptop cooling pad from Amazon. Now this has kept the CPU and GPU closer to a normal operating temperature of around 65 to 76 degrees C while running DaVinci Resolve and the CPU to around only 70 degrees C while running Filmora 9. I want more though. I really want to go ahead and turn the overclock function back on so I needed to cool it even more. Here's where it gets into remodeling my desk. I have a number of 12 volt computer fans just sitting around. So I cut a hole in my desk under the computer and mounted one of these on a switch to add cooler air to the bottom of the computer. In combination, the cooling pad and the desk mounted fan are better than the cooling pad alone. Now a pleasant surprise was that the desk mounted fan alone cooled better by itself and didn't affect the ergonomics of my desk. 
This is because the cooling pad is designed to distribute the cool air across the entire bottom of the computer with the perforated metal screen. This also reduces the amount of air flowing through to the computer because it's distributed, it's not concentrated. This also reduces the amount of air flowing through the pad to the computer. The screen also has the function of acting like a heat sink, so it draws heat away from the computer. But I needed more directed air flow. That's where the desk mounted fan really does well. It has no interruption. It just pushes air through. So now I have part of my solution. I will be doing more testing on overclocking later. I just need to get work done first. The cooling pad will be getting some modification to it. So it will work as well or better than the desk mounted fan and be portable. The reason why I use a laptop in the first place to be portable. So what do you think? Do you have some cooling methods for laptops that I didn't cover? Leave a comment so we can all learn. If you found this video useful, share it with your friends. It might help solve a problem for them. Thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, press the like button below and subscribe. And also check out our other videos.